Hi and welcome back to my channel, my name is Chris Armstrong aka SG Alien and today we've got a really cool one for you. This is the Sega Game Gear, or should I say the limited edition Kids Gear. Now it basically has a fault on it, it doesn't work, it just turns on for a second with power, screen and some words and then just turns off. Now hopefully we can fault find our way through the issue, get it all working again and uh, have a fully working vintage retro Game Gear which would be really cool. Now typically with these things um, it's due to failed capacitors. Um, battery leakage onto the circuit board causing shorting or some sort of water damage something like that so that's basically it what we're going to do now is take you over to the tools that you're going to need and um, open the box up so here we go the basic tools you're going to require are a screwdriver set a game bit screwdriver long nose pliers a toothbrush a couple of cotton buds isopropyl alcohol as you can see in the bottle some solder copper braid for removing solder and of course a soldering iron Okay, so the next step is to get inside this case. We need to see what the condition is, whether there's any corrosion, clean that up, um, and of course, look at the capacitors. Now, even if the capacitors look okay, even if there isn't a whole lot of corrosion, we know there's a problem with this, and we know the typical problem from the research I've done online, what many of you may have uh, looked up already, is typically the is caused by the capacitors. So we're gonna attack that. Um, now, if you want to know where to get your capacitor kit, you can actually look on eBay and potentially Amazon. But for myself, I actually looked up the schematic, which I'll actually show uh, later on. Um, and the schematic will show where the placement of them are according to your game gear. And of course, um, what the capacitor is and its, um, its numbering and where it actually coincides from the schematic to the game gear itself. So for my, for myself, I actually went to a um, uh, to a source of supplier and I actually picked out all of the capacitors by hand and had them bag them up and such. So I got them for the main board, the PCB, which is the power board, and uh, the audio board. So I've actually got to go for a big pile of them. So it's just one bag, and here's the rest of them. So as I go through it, I'll uh, with the power of editing. It would just seem like I've got the right capacitor at the right time as I uh, take it and just solder it in place. Now you could do the same thing and it is the cheapest thing for me per kit. I think I paid in total about $5, something like that. So it's really not very expensive at all. And that's five Singapore dollars. So I'd say that's roughly, gosh, uh, maybe four US dollars. It's really, really very affordable. But if you buy the kit, it's about anywhere between um, sort of 10, 15, 20 dollars I've seen online. So all we're going to do now is basically just take our, uh, our screwdriver and uh, remove all the screws and get inside of here. Now for areas where, um, where I think it would just take a bit of time, I'll just speed through it and I'll, uh, I'll talk where I feel is necessary. So uh, sit back, relax, hopefully you enjoy this if you're just watching for entertainment purposes. If you're looking for a bit of guidance, um, feel free to follow along. Just remember that once we get inside of this, um, I'll try and give you as best information as possible as we come across things and tackle them together. So, all we need to do now is basically get our screwdriver and start removing these screws. Now, something I would suggest before I start speeding along is to get a magnetic screwdriver. So this one here, is actually magnetic and I'll, I'll show you as this comes out. And the other thing is if you have any trouble with like a, a, uh, a tough screw, like this one here is quite tough, but because it's so thin, I can't really get a great grip. I actually have a backup screwdriver with a big chunky handle and it just pops in. Now you may not have that, you may have it. It's, uh, it's really not necessary. And to be honest, here in Singapore, it's easy to get sweaty hands, uh, which I have right now, and that's just a metal screwdriver, so it's easy to slip. But uh, you see here, I've actually undone that, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't come out with it. So what I'm going to do now is go back over to this screwdriver and actually just touch it, and you should be able to see. Let's try and focus on my hand. That's actually dangling. So I take that away, and fantastic. So that way you can't really lose it. Um, some additional things. I would suggest if you can get it um, just get like a little tray 
for like what I've got here. I'm just going to try and clear this pot one moment. Okay, if you can get like a little pot like this on the bottom, uh, the bottom, it actually has a magnet and there's a couple of screws actually stuck to stuck to the bottom of it there. But as I go, I'm going to be putting my screws into here. Then I won't lose it. Can't go anywhere and all of my screws will go right inside. So I've just zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we've got the Game Gear here, the screws just in front. And hopefully, we'll be able to follow on just nicely. So all the bits are staying nice and neat on the desk. I'll just zoom out just a little bit for you to see there. There we go. So I've got my tools just here. All of my capacitors are in a mess there, but that's no problem. It's really very easy to deal with. But for the sake of it, we're going to keep them nice and close and uh, just let you follow along. You may notice if they're a bit stiff, which on this one it seems to be, I'll be switching between screwdrivers, so it's really nothing to worry about. And of course, here in Singapore it's so hot that uh, you may find your, that your hands tend to slip. At this point, I should probably speed up the edit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just uh, the final part. I'm just going to use the magnetic part of the screwdriver just to pull all of those difficult screws out of their holes. And we should be able to get into this very soon. Let's just close this down for a moment. Actually, I'm going to take that off and remove it, put it to one side. Uh, finally, we're going to want to move over to our uh, game bit. Let's see if the camera can actually focus on that. There we go. So right in there is the most unusual screw head uh, that you've ever seen. And uh, yeah, you're going to need one of these to get these out because these are quite tough in here. And as you've just seen, I've had to move back and forth between the two screwdrivers in order to get all of those screws out. But anyway, here we go. Here it is, let's see if we can actually get the camera to focus on that. It is truly the most unusual screw head that you've ever seen. Alright, there we go, hopefully you can see that. Just going to drop that in there, and now, let's uh, just come out a little bit, because we're about to open this thing up. Move that back. Remember, one of the most important things with when doing something like this is just try and keep everything in order as best you can. Alright, here we go. Pop the top. So it actually opens from the bottom outwards. So it's going from bottom to top. So here's the front of the game gear. Okay. So if we do it like that, so it opens like that. But of course, when I have it face down, and I'm actually using like a piece of foam here from uh, some packing foam, really, really thin. You may not have that. You can use like um, a towel or something. I'm just using that to help protect the screen and just the game gear overall right what i'm going to do is actually have to tip that now now that we've got this open we've got a couple of points here connected we need to separate the two halves so i believe we need to pull this part off here this is actually the audio board so i'll just try and do that just try and keep it in view here we go so it's the audio board just try and keep that there okay there's one there's also a second little cable here, just two wires. Just be very careful. Ah, there we go. So if that won't just pull out, this is where you would use like a, a flat head. And just keeping it on the table, moving it around. Here we go. And this is for the power. So this is actually on the, power, uh, the PCB. This is where all the power comes in. This board I'd actually taken out previously for the past uh, for the other game gear that I used. Let's just bobble this thing out. Come on, and there we go. That's come out fairly nicely. As long as you make sure that you've got uh, enough pressure on the opposing side, just wiggle everything nice and gently. Use force, but not too much. Otherwise, you may find yourself pulling things apart, and then you're really going to be in a bit of a pickle. Okay, now that we've got these two things apart, so we've got the back piece here. We can actually have a closer look and a bit of an inspection. 
So that's what we're going to want to do. Let me get nice and tight in there. Hopefully that's focus up. Hopefully. So the switch is located here. So just below the switch and slightly, I guess that would be to the side of this large capacitor and this uh, inductor here. There's actually a little screw and just across this side at the top, there's a screw there. I'm gonna undo these two now and then we should be able to take the board. Now you'll find that this should actually just wiggle free. And here we go. There we go. So what I found actually from my first repair in practice for this video is this little inducer here, let's see if we can turn it around so you can get a better view of it, is actually, a, it's basically it's a coil and it holds a magnetic charge in an electromagnetic field and the two legs are usually very, very weak and they break. And I feel that this one is actually quite wobbly. I don't know whether you can see that movement. Look at that, that's shocking. So what I'm gonna do shortly is um, desolder, let's have a look, this point here, and this point here, perhaps I'll use my screwdriver so I can pull it out a little bit nicer. So there's a point here, and this one here, it looks like a double, but they're connected. Add some more solder, and then we use some solder braid and actually suck that solder off and it should pop right out. Then I can assess the condition of this inducer, and this is a big problem with about four of my other Game Gear boards, and they've all fallen off. So, um, actually, sorry, two fell off and I took two out. Uh, to inspect so I should be able to reuse those and on my previous one I actually took it off put it back on and it's much better now but uh, once the legs break they're totally useless I have also um, managed to acquire another one of these but it's a little bit larger um, but of course again it's sort of at my own risk it's my own choice um, so we'll try fitting maybe one of those in the next video but if I can I want to try and keep this capacitor on so I'm going to check if this one is good um, but these two, I've actually previously marked uh, because I've checked continuity and the capability of them and they're actually not up to, uh, they're, they're basically not working very well uh, under the multimeter. So you don't have to have a multimeter, but if you have a multimeter you can sort of fault find and these parts are incredibly difficult to, to find at their size and the one I have to replace here is actually here. See if we can get a bit of focus on that. Right, so I'll put it next to its its counterpart and look at the size difference. So the case won't close. Now on other people's videos, it looks like he actually people get them to lay down like that. But then this capacitor here has to get bent all the way over. So as long as this one can work, you know, maybe for an extra year or so, it gives me plenty of time to order up another uh, six or seven of these to replace and it'll be a very, very quick sort of 10 minute job. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna take these things apart. But for now, we're, we're gonna put this to one side and move on. Uh, one last point on this, the switch actually comes away from here. So just make sure you keep hold of that and put it with your little screws. It's not magnetic, but uh, it, it will sit in your bowl or your little container just fine. Moving on from the PCB, which was here, is now the audio board. So I'm just gonna turn that around and zoom in for you. There we go, just to make sure that I, that we can keep focus. How's that? There we go, lovely. Hopefully you can see that nicely. Um, so what we've got here, maybe I'll turn it around again. There we go, lovely. Right, so we've got a couple of capacitors on here and they usually go and that means that the audio basically dies altogether, becomes quite faint, or is sort of glitchy. So during this video, we will be rec uh, replacing all four of these capacitors. I've already done this on uh, on the other Game Gear. And uh, yeah, so this one's pretty easy to do. It's nothing to worry about. But this board will come out now. And then once all the boards are out, we'll give them a good cleaning. But step by step, we'll go through everything so you understand what things are and what things are happening. Okay, so just zoom out a little bit for you. There we go, just get a better view. And uh, once this is out, I'll hold it up to the camera. Have a look. So 
as you can see, I don't need a lot of grip strength to, uh, to undo these screws. Unlike the case, which seemed to uh, be screwed together with a death grip. There we go. So it's just two screws. Okay, just take it out nicely because the volume button here uh, is fitted into, let's see if you can focus, come on, is fitted into this slot right here. So you don't want to risk breaking uh, the component. So I'm just having a little visual inspection here of this, and it actually looks okay, it looks quite clean. Uh, no, I haven't cleaned this up before, but um, what I may do is just give it give it another clean anyway. But anyway, very, very, very quick, very easy. Everything looks nice on there, but again, we're still gonna replace these capacitors and make sure that they're okay. At the end of the day, if, um, if worse comes to worst, I'll replace every single capacitor like I did on the first Game Gear. However, if we can get away with just replacing 90%, but some of the more difficult uh, capacitors, just like back on the PCB here, with this uh, with, with this uh, large capacitor, which is very rare and difficult and, and oversized, um, if we can leave it on, great. If we can salvage one from another one, great for now, because uh, then I can give myself a little bit of time, a couple of weeks or a month, order some more in and then just resolve them in so it doesn't need a video of its own um, it's no different from anything else but um yeah do watch out for these inducers and a lot of them are faulty so I always suggest take them out and uh, clean them up and pop them back in with some nice fresh solder and perhaps a bit of extra solder along the length of the leg and that might give it the strength it needs to uh, to hold out so anyway moving on now to uh, the main board just gonna put this shell to one side this will get a good cleaning later on, but uh, now let's move on to the main motherboard. So on first inspection, just looking over the motherboard, turn it around so it's a little easier for you to see. Um, it actually looks okay. However, um, when I when I get right in here, I'm looking at these these uh, capacitors. Some of them are actually sort of lifted up. Uh, most of them are actually glued down. All of these are supposed to be glued down, which is why um, most people require these uh, these pliers. You actually get in there, grip hold of it, and sort of wiggle it backwards and forwards and uh, and break the legs. That's the safest way to get them off here. And then you can just get in there with your uh, nice new capacitor. So let's get an example one here. You just get in there, so you cut the legs, bend the legs a little bit, put a bit of solder on there, and then, of course, from point to point. Now remember, don't get the negative and the positive mixed up. But on the board, nicely enough, there is usually a positive and a negative. And I'll try and zoom into that a little bit later. But before we get to that, we just need to assess the board, see how good or bad it is. Um, it doesn't look too terrible. However, just looking at some of these pads here, they're looking a bit dirty. And seeing that this capacitor here, uh, this one here, is actually raised, that is um, an obvious sign, and you may not be able to see it, but on this capacitor here, it looks a little bit dirty underneath. So I think there is a little bit going on with this board, and we'll, um, we'll move on to basically removing this. But um, before I do that, a very, very, very important point is um, you may have a... Th right, there's two types of game gear, okay, the main motherboard. One has one chip, and the other has two of these chips and um, yeah you need to make sure you have the right one now on the schematic it will actually say um, single ASIC which is this that's one ASIC chip or double ASIC chip and then that will tell you which capacitors uh, which capacitors you're going to need to replace and uh, move on with so next thing I'm going to do now is just unscrew all of the screws and take the board out, move it away from the case, then after that we'll move on to cleaning the board and then we'll start removing um, all the capacitors on the main board, the audio board and the power distribution board, the PCB. Let's do that next. Something I've actually found with some of these boards is the screws themselves seem to have a lot of green gunk on. Um, these all seem pretty okay but um, they also have a lot of, they look dirty. 
the sapling's zoom in on this board for you. Let's move a little bit more forward. Yeah, like that. And there you go. Hopefully you can uh, get a good view. Got some aeroplanes flying outside. Welcome to Singapore. They're actually flying from the uh, the military base we have quite close by. And they, funnily enough, fly right over my home. Which is nice, but because uh, I quite like planes, but I'm... Um, yeah, not when you're trying to film a video. Anyway, we'll just keep going. Okay, so a point to note here is um, when you're trying to take the board out, you need to also remove this big screw and this big screw here. Just give it a little wiggle. Okay, so that's still very much solid. You also have four screws here. These screws, thanks airplane, these four screws are to hold the screen in and um, the shielding which protects the fluorescent tube. So that's the funny thing about this. This actually uses um, an incandescent tube, which is fantastic and of course terrible because that's the reason why the battery life on these Game Gears is absolutely terrible. Between sort of people playing three to four hours, even had one person on YouTube say six hours. Personally, I think they're all absolutely mad. Um, the most I ever got out of these was sort of two, two and a half hours. Of constant gameplay on batteries but that's okay because after this video I'm potentially going to do a video on um, a battery upgrade for the battery mod which actually connects to the back and I'm gonna upgrade it with basically a gosh the planes are really annoying um, I'm basically gonna upgrade it with a power bank and all its circuitry so you can actually Plug, uh, plug this in and charge it and power it off of USB-C type and a huge power bank battery. Now uh, tell me what you think about that in the comment section. There we go, just remove that. Now this comes away freely. Be careful with this because of course it houses the screen. Now I want to try and get a good view here for you. So looking at the condition of the board now, it looks fairly clean, however, and when I say clean, I mean clear of corrosion, but it's also very, very dirty and dusty, and even on this screen here, it has like a lot of, I would say, mold or fungus. Now for me, I'm going to pop this into my dehumidifier case for my cameras um, after I give it a good cleaning, and hopefully anything inside of it, uh, after a good sort of... Um, isopropyl alcohol bath will um, will remove any of that, that bacteria growing and kill it and enable it to uh, to potentially just work nice and freely. Uh, just looking here you can actually see the touch pad is still here. I'm actually pushing these bits down. This is disgusting. This is really quite poor. Let's see how close and uh, focused we can get that. There we go. So hopefully you can see that on the camera but this is incredibly dirty and it's probably the cause of what's wrong with this thing. It's probably causing a short somewhere, so there's a little bit of rusty uh, corrosion somewhere, and it's causing this thing to not work quite properly. You've got to remember, this is like 25 plus years old. Um, also, when you're taking this thing apart, just notice that on the other side, so where the touch points are, so here you have your start button, uh, your A and your B, I guess it is, your, your, your punch and your kick. Uh, you have some pads which are still on the board, so just remember to take those off, all of this stuff is going to get cleaned and just as you see here, I'm just going to pop that back down there. This pad here, I'm just going to take that off for now and we're just grouping things, we're keeping things together. So on here there's actually two locating lugs, there's one here which goes in this hole and there's one just here which goes through this hole and that just makes sure that it goes on the right way every time. You also have your speaker here, now I found that this part here can actually break, so you might need to glue this back down. And my one of my contact points on my last Game Gear actually broke, so you might need to melt that and uh, re resolder the the wire on. So just all these things are good points. Just we'll just remove that screen for now. That will need a thorough cleaning. And the next thing we're going to do now is to move on to uh, the cleaning of this of absolutely everything with hypopropyl alcohol. I can never I can never say it all of a sudden. There we go, this stuff. Isopropyl alcohol. Okay everybody, so what's next is we're basically gonna be 
uh, cleaning the motherboard, the, um, the audio board, and the PCB, the power board. So what we're going to do now is uh, basically just take some time to clean up the board. I may just fast forward through this process. But what you want to do is just make sure you get over every single contact. These contacts here, these are the push button contacts. You really, really, really want to make sure that you are uh, that you get these nice and clean. And there might be some areas which are really gunky. Now this is even dirtier than it previously was. Let's just see if we can focus here. There we go. That is incredibly dirty now. Uh, so we're going to use the other side. And of course the other thing is we've got the toothbrush. But uh, since this board looks fairly alright, I don't think I need to scrub anything. There's, there's no real corrosion I can see that needs a good scrubbing. This really just needs uh, a good cleaning from the dirt rather than the corrosion and of course if there is some light corrosion this will be more than enough in my experience to um, to remove any of that dirt but still I've just changed to a new side and as you can see there I, that is quite a lot of dirt and I'd already rubbed over that once so this is really showing how dirty this seemingly clean board is Let's see how close we can get into this. Let's move this over to here. Hopefully that focuses. So we're just going over absolutely everything. And you want to be careful of these, these strips. This one looks a little bit bent here and a bit bent there. Um, the last time I used this, the screen was absolutely fine. No lines or anything like that. So I don't want to put any kinks in and, and cause any problems. So we're just going to go over all of this. Good, but this is actually getting quite dirty. Seems to be this point over here where the contrast wheel is. I think, it's, yeah, this is the contrast wheel, so the brightness wheel. Um, this is a little bit stiff and it seems quite dirty in this area, so I might need to desolder and resolder these points um, just in case, also, because basically it's quite thick solder, so it could have um, basically it could have cracked underneath and cause like a minor short or become like a resistor because if the, the right amount of metal isn't there, it can actually cause resistance and then it won't get enough power from the switch to the um, to the light, the backlight. And uh, yeah, that will cause both heating and failure because all the other components aren't getting the right voltage as well. Aha, you say. So a lot of this stuff I'm talking about isn't typically addressed uh, in my experience. So we will do the the screen, but I'm gonna do that with a clean cotton bud. So again, just going back in here. We've just turned the board around now. So this side of the board is where these components are here. So this is the main D-pad, the up, down, left, right part. That's where they are now. And of course we'll do the other side right after. So I'm not pushing too hard down on this board. Just giving it a nice clean. Hello, Mr. Aeroplane. Really want to make sure. Most important thing on this side, there's three things. These buttons here, obviously the screen condition, and then these buttons here. So we've got the start, B, A button, screen, and the up, down. just on the, uh, the D-pad area now. So this looks like it might have a bit of corrosion with this little point here. I'm not quite sure what that goes to, let's have a look. Ah, so that here, this is actually the solder point for this side. That's the left side of the uh, backlight. So I might need to desolder that and resolder that because that looks, that looks a bit pants. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Like some glue or something. You really don't want that on there. So anyway, just make sure you get in everywhere with the isopropyl. And uh, what I will do after we've gone over all of this, let's come out of it. What I will do once I've gone over this side and then we clean the next side, is we'll actually remove these uh, screws here, and the same on this side, here and here, and then the screen will actually flip up from here backwards. So let's put it down there. 
to flip backwards over to itself and then we'll basically be able to clean under here the bulb itself and the back side of this which is really just some plastic but anywhere where dirt can pick up um, needs to be worked away it's been you know almost 30 years so let's just go out there. okay this is pretty good it's pretty good next is that now this cotton bud is pretty much wrecked uh, pretty much ruined it, it can still be used on the other side I would say this one's quite clean however I mean it's it's clean in comparison to that however it's nowhere near clear enough uh, clean enough to tackle the screen so I'm gonna get some fresh ibuprofen alcohol spray that on let's just try and get a better view for you guys let's see if it turned all the way around so it's tilted up in the other direction Gonna give that a spray, one little spray, and that's actually, I would say, more than enough. We're just gonna give it a quick wipe down. Now you can use um, a kitchen towel, which is great, but this will more than do it. And just give it, basically, I'm just going over it one time here. Then what I'll do is I'll turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing back this way, and then we can see any smudges and such which are still left being massively accurate because the alcohol is actually evaporating and as it does so it's showing me where there are things left so right here and here we'll just give that a little wipe give it a second or two and we'll wait and actually as this evaporates if the marks are still there or like the moldy patches then they'll stay there and you'll still be able to uh, see them so I think here, 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 and how many is my head on this light? Here, yeah, so basically just need to give it a good working, but let's try and bring this cotton bud into view. There we go, get some focus. You see how dirty that is? That's from 30 years of build up because nothing can get under that screen in, in the typical sense of normal dust. So this has to be like bacterial mold due to the environment and such. So. I'm not even sure where this came from. Like originally, this could have come from Japan, where it's much colder, has a lot more moisture. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna give this a good clean, and then of course, once I've done all of this, it will go into my um, camera cabinet. Now you don't need to do any of this, uh, this, this cabinet drying, uh, but just because I have it, I will use it. So you can skip that step. Just make sure you do the best possible job you can, and chances are it'll be absolutely fine. Of course, you can always upgrade and change the screen with uh, with an original, or there's something called the Mic Wheel um, upgrade, and basically the screen on that is unbelievable. It's out of this world. However, um, you have to do an awful lot of soldering and you can mess it up very easily. Then you have wires coming off all over the place. And frankly, in my opinion, it looks awful. Um, the price, you know, it, it, you get a good solid price for one of those things and they're quite enjoyable to play. But if I want to play these games in that sort of resolution, I'll just play it on my PC with the ROMs. So it's using the clean side. Uh, for me, I'm a bit of a purist. I like this as it is. I may do um, an upgrade but it won't be changing the screen. As long as the screen's good enough, I'll switch out the light. So the bulb in here, which you saw the battery, I'll take that out and I'll actually put in an LED and then that should pretty much double the capacity. And I think there is a YouTube video out there which you can uh, you can look up. And if I can find it uh, when I release this, I'll put a link into that video. Um, I don't get anything from that. I don't know that YouTuber, but I'll put a link into that video and you can watch him uh, install that. It's very, very easy. You have to do a little bit of soldering. There's like uh, one or two wires to add. But other than that, that's pretty much it. And I believe that LCD is about $10. So not too bad at all. But to be honest, I believe you can probably buy one of those strip LEDs, you know, the ones on the rolls. And you can probably just remove that, put that strip in, or even multiple strips. Um, 
So it might, you know, you might only be saving a third on power in comparison because you're using many more LEDs. Whereas the $10 upgrade the guy uses on his channel, um, it's super important that you really take time with this. I think I might need to go and get like some kitchen mug. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, the LED that, that guy uses for about 10 bucks, a bit more alcohol. That one, it looks like the LED is up at the top and is sort of displaced down through plastic. So, um, yeah, you get like several main large spots. I'd rather keep the plastic and put LEDs all the way along and then you could turn it all the way down. So you're actually using less power, but you're getting a more even spread. But of course it's much more DIY and it'll take you longer. However, I believe the result will be better. You'll save considerable power in comparison to this, but it won't be as much as just using one strip displaced. I, don't, I just think it'll be a better product overall. But uh, since I've had so many Game Gears, as long as I can get sort of uh, a couple running, I'm going to have one which is modded, which will have um, C-type charging, plug and play, and a battery pack. And uh, we'll do the light mod. Anyway, I think that's pretty much done. I'm actually going to go off and get some kitchen towel, give another spray, and then another wipe down. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise we're going to be here forever and a day. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to go and do now. Of course, that's good enough to keep for cleaning the other side. No point wasting them. Alright, continuing on. We've got some uh, kitchen towel. Just some up. So I have some uh, just ordinary kitchen towel. This is a nice quality one. Um, just basically fold it and fold it and fold it. Of course, you'll be able to unfold it and utilize it again and again and again. All the way down to it's a little square, and then just sort of fold it over finally so it's sort of a third the size of the screen. And then you're going to want to just bend in the middle and just gently rub. So, this is already looking significantly better. I'm putting a little bit of pressure on there, that's true. Oh, I can actually see so much dirt, so I'm going to use the corner now. I'm going to just remove this plastic gently. Okay. That's no problem. But that is filthy. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I've just lifted that off the corners. I don't know whether the camera can see that. Can you see the dirt here all the way along? There's even corrosion right here. See this yellow mark? That is corrosion. That's actually rust. And same on this corner here. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Not the best at all. So I'm going to put that to one side for now, and we're going to continue with the screen because, let's see if I can just focus in a little bit more. Can you see here? Put my hand in, focus up. Come on, there we go. Anyway, so all the way around, it's kind of a crusty edge, so fortunately I need to put a little bit extra in. I'm going to use the edge of the kitchen towel to uh, sort of get in there, and I'm not pushing particularly hard this time, I'm just allowing it to sort of glide over the glass. Be very careful near the ribbon cable. And this way. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, uh, this way we should be able to capture everything. And I'm just going to do the little circles. Kind of like polishing your boots up. So if anyone was in the military, you'll know what I'm talking about. Just lots and lots of little circles now. It looks like I'm also leaving an awful lot of sort of um, fluff. That's the great thing about this towel because once you once you finally just wipe over it normally, it takes most of that away. And of course, you can always blow gently. Uh, don't blow too hard because you don't want to be uh, putting a spitter, spittle spatter onto it. So it gets rid of a lot. Just keep doing it until it's just right. Now the other thing you can use is like a camera, um, a camera blower or squeezer. This one's a rocket. Gonna zoom back out again for you. So this one's a rocket, and this one of those things you just squeeze it and it blows the dust out of the inside of your camera when you're giving the sensor a clean. So this essentially is like a big sensor. Um, so obviously they, they do two different things, but um, in the shape and form it is. It's, it's like a big sensor, just give it a good, good clean. So since again, since I have this, you don't need it, but just to speed things up while I'm uh, while I'm doing this video. 
I'm just going to do that. And I'm just adding a little bit more isopropyl alcohol just to help to clean those bits up and get them to stick to this cloth. Because the difference between the alcohol and say using water to clean this glass, which I guess you could use, I use my nail just enough, it looks quite hard on there. I'd rather use my nail, which is relatively soft in comparison to the glass. I'd rather use that to uh, remove the stuff than uh, be more forceful with this because I could crack it. And once it's cracked, it's game over. So that's looking pretty good. That is looking almost perfect. Now I can actually see some very, very light scratches. I don't think you can see it, but if you can, awesome. If you can't, uh, that's unfortunate. Let's see if that just focuses in. Okay, hopefully that, that can focus. But uh, that's pretty much spotless and perfect. Now that's it's definitely gonna get a bit more fluff and such on it. But that really doesn't matter. Now we can move on to the other side. Actually, no, we won't. We'll give this a quick clean. So we use the same bit of cloth. Okay, put it over here. And we'll just just give it a quick wipe down, and you're going to see the difference in the gunk that comes off. Also, a lot of the gunk is is most likely some sort of tack glue or surface glue. Yeah, it's quite a lot of yellowing on that. Let's see if you can see that. There's a lot of nasty, nasty yellowing. So we're just getting all of this off. And when it all goes back together, it'll be really good, really nice. If you're wondering if you need glue for this, it will actually compression fit or hold. Plus, it still has a bit of tackiness, so that'll be just fine. Just give both sides a good clean. We don't want it to uh, attract any dust. While the cloth still has some uh, alcohol moisture, just use that. Okay, so that is pretty good. That is looking lovely. Just hoping this can sort of focus in, hopefully on my hand. So that's looking pretty nice to me. All right, we're gonna put that to one side as well. And now, we're gonna take this, flip it, and we're now going to clean these components. So this is like the sort of the main battlefield of the whole video. Um, I apologize if the video drags on a bit, but I'm trying to be as detailed as possible. Um, you could probably do it in a shorter version. There's other people who basically just take it apart, say these screws, and uh, just take this, get the alcohol, clean it all, and be done. And we could totally do that. But I'm also trying to explain a lot of the stuff that I've, uh, I've experienced with this. So, um, so just in case you have these issues, you uh, you can sort of know what could come up, what to expect, and how to deal with it. All too often, people make the same video, and they don't explain anything. They just repeat and copy what somebody else has done. But uh, yeah, I seem to be the uh, the only person that comes up with an issue that no one uh, no one else has addressed on YouTube. So rather do that. Anyway, all I'm doing is I'm just going around all the points here, just trying not to get the cloth to uh, catch too much, because as you can see it's starting to sort of come apart, and that's not because I'm pushing particularly hard, I'm really not, I'm sort of letting it glide over, and in some areas I'm giving it a bit of pressure, like this pad here, that's not in the best of shape, there's actually some speckles on it, let's see if we can zoom in. Uh, that you can all see this. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be daring with how f close I can get to the focus because I don't have a macro setting. Okay, so it's actually got a couple of speckles and such. I use my little screwdriver. So it's kind of the army training in me, you know, using a pointer and things. Anyway, for sake of argument, some a few like little spots which seem like scratches or something. Oh my god, it looks like I'm shaking like crazy. I'm not really. Uh, there's a spot there, and there's like a couple trailing off. Then there's just uh, a lot of pitting, I think you would call it. So we'll just use that, just clean over that. There we go. That, that's a lot better. Now I've used that. That is a lot better than the... Because uh, I can put a lot more force, and there's nothing really to break. It's just a copper pad uh, area. So there's no components. This is essentially the component. 
So I can see there's actually a lot of wear. There's actually two points on this. Now, I really want you guys to be able to see this a lot better. There we go. So there's a lot of wear coming along this part and this part, and there seems to be a bit there. You may not be able to see that on the camera. You have to take my word for it. But uh, yeah, but anyway, that is well and truly clean now. So uh, we've got a capacitor there, a capacitor there. So we'll just clean those other sides because we'll be applying heat later on, but we'll break these off. And we've got the main ASIC chip here, the single chip. I'm just going around these, these points here, just giving it a little bit of a clean. And just in general, making sure that the whole board is lovely and corrosion free because even um, the smallest amount of corrosion can make a, uh, a short. That means like uh, two wires touching uh, where they shouldn't, so positive and negative touch when they really, really shouldn't. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep this focus all in there. So even all of this metal, we want to keep this all, all nice and clean. So I'm just going over all of it. And yes, this still does have plenty of uh, ipropyl, but just for argument's sake, I'm just going to dip it in a bit more. All of this needs a ruddy good clean, just for the sake of it being out of the case for the first time we'll ever seeing it. Most likely uh, 30 years. I don't think anyone else has taken this part because this is totally original all the parts are here nothing's been disturbed and as you saw at the beginning of the video the screws were incredibly tight and look at the dust oh my goodness I wonder if you can see this yeah I think the light needs to be better let me get my phone camera and let me turn the light on that because uh, the area is black it's uh, going to be very very difficult okay let's get that right in there if I need to do that side down yeah so here and here, so this stretch going up here, and this circle here, this is actually where the bolt fits into. It's covered in like a greasy dirt. And I don't know whether you can see that. Just look how dirty that is. I mean, it was getting dirty before, but that is, a lot of that's just from here. Wow. So, yeah. Basically, if you have like a surface like this, it just sort of acts like a dirt magnet. Any dirt in the air will just get stuck to it over time. And of course that will build and grow out. And it's also a surface, a very, um, a very large dirty surface for mold and such to grow. And then that will just uh, consume more moisture and it will destroy all of the circuitry around the board. So that'll be about as fun as uh, yeah, it won't be great. So anyway, moving on, let's zoom out again. You can get a better overview. So we've given this a, a really good clean. So that is now very nice and clean. The other side, unfortunately, is disgusting, but I'm just gonna power through this now. So sit back, relax, and uh, I'm gonna be quiet while I just get this job done. This is the game cartridge. You won't be able to see it on camera. I, I don't think I can get any view inside of it very well, but it's really not looking great on the inside of there. So we're just going to give it the best clean that we can. I'm actually getting quite a bit of dirt out of this. Okay, so just looking here, try and get this in the middle. Actually, I'm going to lift it up, bring it towards the camera. Where are we? Can I focus up? Okay, so this capacitor here, which will 100% be changed, this is, um, this is next to the contrast button. This one here is incredibly loose. Let's, uh, let's get the screwdriver. I don't know whether you can see that, I certainly hope so. Do you see how loose that is? That's wobbling around like crazy. Crazy, and it's up and down, it's like a spring. That should be stuck down firmly. Okay, so that's telling me that this is potentially swollen as it's failed with time. And um, and this is probably one of the causes. And I'm actually looking quite closely. And I'm trying to tip this up. Looks like, let me get this back in view, sorry. Looks like, uh, there we go. Just inside there at the base, looks like there's a little bit of corrosion. It's difficult to show. Oh, look, this is lifting up. I don't really want to snap it off just yet. Yeah, 
there's definitely some corrosion. Let's let that focus up. Hang on. Let me get it away a bit. Okay. So just under there, there is glue, but there's also corrosion around the glue patches. So this is probably probably had its day that capacitor but uh thankfully we're going to be changing it anyway so i'll just come back out and i'll continue with the clean but uh, yeah let's have a look at this you see there that is all green that green is um is corrosion so 100 percent we've got an awful lot of dirt and corrosion but it looks almost new that's what's crazy about this This one here. Let this focus up. Come to me for a minute. There we go. This capacitor right here, I'm oh sorry, this one here, this one is moving like crazy. Let's try and get this a better view. Right here. See how wobbly that is? I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on it. I don't know whether the camera can hear all the clicking and such, but yeah, I'm probably lift this all the way up. Look, so that's had its day, and there's a bit of corrosion under it. Yeah, it just shouldn't be like that. So this one here is solid. I can't move that at all. Nothing. That is solid. This one and this one. Oh, hang on. Where are we? Bear with me. So this one and this one here are definitely uh, on my radar for. You know, they, they have to be changed. Unfortunately, these ones are, the, the replacement capacitors are really quite big. So let's have a look. So in comparison to this, I think one of them is actually like here. So if you look at the size, this here, since I can lift it up and the camera can focus on it. Okay, let's see if we can get, it. that's as close as it's gonna get. This capacitor here, that is tiny. That is like twice the size. Let's see if I bend the legs just so I can. Hang on, okay. Look at the size difference. And this is the capacitor, the shiny bit. This brown square is actually like a case. Okay, it's all wibbly wobbly, and that helps to actually disperse any heat, um, and it helps to secure it to the board. And this capacitor here is about twice the size of the internal here, which is the capacitor, and uh, it has no case. So, yeah, so this is why there's issues with, when you're doing this, you have to sometimes get a bit creative with how to lay the board down. So, uh, yeah, big problem there. But it's okay, we'll just uh, finish up the cleaning here. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is remove the screws which hold this screen on, and the screws actually here and here, they're on the back side. There's my screwdriver, there we go. Now these screws I'm not going to be putting into the tray. I'm gonna be keeping these screws. That's how dumb it's not coming out. Where's that one? Is that one just behind the one? These screws look slightly different in color. It could be tarnish or something. Yeah, here they are. They all come out. Anyway, I'm going to be keeping these together once they fall out. There we go. I'm just going to put it down. One's there. One's there. Come on, come on up. There we go. Fantastic. So they all look quite tarnished, which means that there could be some hidden corrosion. Turn this over slowly, and we find this is the uh, displacement board at the back. Okay, here is the bolt. You hear that? This is glass. I don't want to tap too hard and smash it. That's glass. That's amazing. It's a bit like uh, the sort of bulb you would have over your vanity 
I'll tell you what, and to be honest, looking at this compared to the other one I've seen, one, it's got a poop load of dirt on, whether you can see it or not, I'm, I'm sorry, let's try and get back in there again. Okay, close if you can. So one, it's got a poop load of dirt on it, and I'll be able to show that with a nice, fresh, here we go, let's get some ice purple, some nice, fresh alcohol on there. There's bits of dirt rolling around on this stuff, goodness gracious. So that is already quite dirty. Let's see if I can get that focused. So yeah, it's very, very lightly tainted. We're just gonna get around this. I think this is coming loose, but I don't actually want it to come apart. Uh, just because it's a bit of a pain putting them back together and then you run a real risk of smashing the bulb, which is something I truly do not want to do. So I'm just lightly going to go over this and hopefully I'm just sort of rolling this in my fingers like this as I go very gently so we pick up as much as possible. Of course we want to get the underside. Okay. Right, that's about as good as it's going to get with this. Now I'm going to switch back to our cloth from earlier. Flip it over, use a nice clean side. And ever so gently, I'm going to support this ever so gently roll over this, or rub over this, I should say. Just wipe all of that down. Okay, turn that around. Give it a little bit of a wipe, as gentle as possible. And finally, the bulb. There we go. There we go. Very nice. Okay, that is significantly better. Looks like it's very smudgy, but that really doesn't matter. This is just a reflector. So all the wasted or potentially lost light is actually being bounced off uh, at this part here, at the back of this, and then of course the screen itself is then being uh, lit up. See, it now looks quite smudgy and such, but I think that really is like a mold. So I'm going to need to get uh, get a, get in there with a bit more elbow grease and such. I might even need to get like a, a little bit of a little bit, <laughs> like the smallest droplet and then some water and there's two tiny, tiny bits because nothing gets grease off better than, uh, than soap. Uh, isopropyl alcohol does a great job, but uh, it can't do everything greatly. But uh, just for the sake of this, I'm being overly, overly um, careful and cautious because I really want this to come out nicely. So this ball is actually looking quite nice now. I'm relatively pleased with that. So I'm going to turn this back over. I'm happy that this is relatively clean. This doesn't look too bad. Again, you can just take your, your cotton bud and just run around this immediate area, which it, which was hiding under the uh, under the, the tabs here. All right, so if in doubt, give it a quick rub. Yeah, I'll do these bits here. Okay. All along the sides, mainly these side portions. Okay, I'm pretty happy that that is, I mean, wow, actually. The amount of dirt coming off of this and the yellowing is pretty impressive. So that's all good. I'll turn this back over. Nice and gently, take your time. Okay, if you want to do this and you're being serious about it, if you want to stand a chance, then you need to take it seriously. Now I'm just sort of holding that in place with my fingers and gently, slowly putting it down. screwdriver or the screwdriver this is the best thing if it's not magnetic you can't hold it on like that and then place it straight in and even if it does fall it'll just end up stuck to the side which is fantastic okay now for the difficult task of lining these holes up so what I suggest you do is try and get this in the middle and come in a little bit closer a bit closer again okay so I now need to line these things up Best thing to do is just to get that, give it a little wiggle, not too much. When it finds it, you can just allocate. There we go, I believe that one's on. But you don't want to tighten it too much. In fact, give it sort of a, a half a turn backwards, loosely, right? And that allows the rest of it to move and gives this a little bit of wiggle. You see how I'm wiggling that? If I tighten that, you can't move it. So for example, all right, something I learned when I studied mechanics. So it's tighter, now it can't wiggle, right? So let's say one of these other holes here, 
I put the screw in, and I can't, it won't go in. If I start forcing this around, I might be scratching something underneath, and then I might create a short. So, by keeping this loose, half a thing back, there we go, half a turn back, and it's just under actually, there we go. So now, this can move again, and I can actually locate the next screw. And usually what you do, is you go for the opposite side. So I went in here, now we should go in this side. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back over, nice and gently and slowly. All right, so it'll be this one now. That's right, it'll be this one, what am I talking about? Down here, just put it in there. There we go, everything super gentle and slow. Just, you can give it a little bit of a wiggle. You'll know when it's in there, because you'll feel it tightening. I'll just give it a little tighten backwards in the other way. And then we'll go to the opposite side. Here we go. And now getting it all done. This is great. Okay. And the final one. And then we'll tighten them up. From side to side. Okay. This one's got a little bit of a kick. There we go. It's in there. So now I can sort of give it. So now I feel that it's tight ish. Or it, you know, it's got to its stop point. Now you can go half a turn into tightness. Because you're sort of tightening into plastic, you do not want to overturn because if you do so, you'll um, you'll destroy the threads and then it will just release it. And then you'll have to use glue or a bigger screw. So we'll tight, hang on, not yet. Now there we go. And then there, perfect. There we go. Again and perfect. Okay, so it's actually jumping out. So I'm not stopping myself from. I'm not forcing it down too much. So by doing that, when it gets to the point where you want, it actually jump out. So fantastic. So now we have a very clean motherboard. We've gone over the screen. We'll address the uh, smudges and such before we put it back into the case. Otherwise, you're only going to be potentially putting fingers and, and oil on. So your hands actually excrete uh, a very fine oil, very uh, thin oil. And that's why fingerprints are left on things. So that's why we'll also finish going over the screen. Uh, last now we need to move from this we need to move that out of the way and we need to work on these two little guys now If you think I'm going a bit too slow for you it's only because those of you that may never have worked on anything like this uh, May not have any experience or maybe you just want to know the real ins and outs I'm just trying to cover all of those points. So here we go. So now we're just going to go over these with the isopropyl alcohol And of course once I remove components, I'm going to go over it again it just means we're not, um, this is the PCB, the power distribution board. Um, it just means that we're not fighting through gunk uh, when we're trying to desolder things because uh, the gunk can actually mean that the heat isn't hot enough. And then you have to go hotter, so you get a hotter uh, soldering iron or maybe you have to leave it there a little bit longer. And then you might start damaging good parts next to it. So we want to save this one. So if we get too hot, trying to remove this and there's gunk, you know, the heat will spread to here and potentially damage the component. You just want to get the joint, the solder spot, very, very hot. Let it melt, release, and it's done. Okay. So we're going over everything. So because I'm jibber-jabbering, that's chatting away so much, this is actually evaporating quicker. Hopefully it's a nice time to go over these pins. Really loud to soak, just in case there's any uh, any corrosion. Just make sure you get these contacts, because this is where the batteries connect to. And currently, I don't have a working uh, sort of power plug to go into here. I did have, but uh, I'm testing my other game gear. I think I stressed them. Again, they're about you know, 25, 30 years old, so they gave out. So we're just gonna focus on getting it working with the batteries. And of course, if this is all good and changed over, there's no reason logically that this won't work unless this, you know, th there's corrosion under here that I wasn't aware of and it's joining. But uh, logically, it should work. Anyway, that's pretty good. Just make sure the switch is going over. Now what I'm gonna want to do is actually get some isopropyl alcohol down into there. Now there's two things you can do here. 
you can either really load up on cotton bud and just sort of soak it in and soak it in like this and then you turn the switch backwards and forwards and that's fine you can do that you can keep doing that it's kind of like putting WD-40 in or you can get a dropper we'll uh, move on to this one now oh sorry we'll, we'll flip it go through this one Okay, so we're going to continue now. We're moving on to the audio board. I'm just going to give it a good, good clean. Of course, you want to check that all of these components are corrosion free. And I must be honest, this has got to be the cleanest game of beer I've ever looked inside of. So whoever had this one, they must have really spent the extra money on this uh, kid gear. Um, and because it's uh, limited edition, Obviously, whoever had this is a little bit uh, more sensible, probably a bit older and more mature. So they've taken better care of it. Yeah, so it's probably been in a better environment, um, not been taken out and about so much. And thus, it is much cleaner and corrosion, not as, uh, I don't want to say corrosion free because there is, as we've seen from these cotton buds, there's a lot of dirt and certainly some corrosion on some of the cotton buds with all the green and blue uh, liquid but it's definitely in an impressive condition especially for its age it's really pretty nice i'm very i'm very pleased with this the audio check seems all right okay wow okay really got in there okay so there's a bit of a little metal contact there if we can zoom into that just like that okay so little metal contact here so what i want to do because that seems like a little brown to me i want to put load it up with a bit of ibuprofen uh, alcohol and uh, i'll show you my second method now for uh so i was basically talking about the switch but i didn't tell you the uh the second method i got distracted while <laughs> someone was at my door and that's why I didn't get back to that. So anyway, I actually have um, a little girly bottle here. So um, it's used. And uh, this had some sort of makeup or something. And you guys could have seen the camera view. And what I've done is I've just washed it out. And it happens to have a glass. Okay, you can only hear this glass with this. It has a glass pipette inside, which is amazing. Yeah, it looks like it's a bit out of focus because I'm so zoomed in. Anyway, there we go, it's got a glass pipette, which is great. So it means it's, uh, it's now very, very clean. And I'm just gonna load that into there quite a bit. I mean, it's droplets, but it's, it's really focused in one area. So if there is any in there, I'm sort of flushing the corrosion out. And you really do want to do your best to take care of this. And the same thing in between this little wheel here no point just putting it in the middle. I mean, you can put a spot in there. You really want to put it down into the gubbins. And even a toothbrush won't get into there. Now, since this um, since this Game Gear really hasn't been very dirty, uh, seemingly not as dirty, I haven't needed to use the uh, the fantastic toothbrush of uh, <laughs> destruction and cleaning, or destruction of, uh, of, of stuff to clean. You know, I really didn't need to get any Get anything out of here has been really really very easy for me but um yeah anyway that's pretty much done fantastic so what we're going to do now is move on to um gosh what are we going to do now we need to move on to actually soldering and desoldering and we'll start and we won't do the we won't do these boards that will do is we'll start with the main board let's move all this stuff out of the way so we're going to start on this uh what we'll do is we'll start on this main board and we'll start removing some of these faulty uh, pins. Uh, we'll start removing some of these faulty capacitors, especially the ones which are, are wibbly wobbly and moving. And then once uh, these are all changed on the board, we'll actually connect it back to the PCB, uh, put some batteries in and um, hopefully it will turn on and work. And if it does that, fantastic. 
then we'll basically jump on to removing uh, all the capacitors on the audio board and then we'll replace the two here not the big one because if we can salvage that great but um if we can uh if we, if we can salvage it it'll be fantastic but if not i have to change it uh, with the huge one but i want to remove this inducer as well and do solder that so a lot of good stuff coming out if you're also working on the single ASIC Game Gear motherboard, you're going to need this um, capacitor list. Now, please note that some of these capacitors are going to be very difficult to find in their relative voltages as listed here. So you, like me, may need to go 33 UF, 10 volts. Uh, that's what I've had to do. I suggest that you, um, you go up only as little as possible, although some people say you can go up as high as you'd like. Again, I would suggest try and keep it as original as possible. And also the lower you keep it, the size tends to stay um, fairly similar to the, the original size. But unfortunately, some of these like C47 and C49, they're rather large. And of course, the main power board um, uh, capacitor, that is almost twice the size of the original. And why I've tried to uh, maintain and keep as many of those as possible However, I have many uh, spare game gears, so I've been able to test several of them, and uh, I think I've got about two or three that are good for now. But I will try and order all of these larger ones in the smaller original sizes when I can find them online into the future. Now, what I suggest when you actually take these things apart is start from uh, the top of the parts list and work your way down. For me, I'm gonna start with C1. This is the bottom middle left capacitor. All you're going to want to do is take your um, your pliers and basically grasp it firmly either side, break free of the glue underneath, and then lift it up and down, up and down until the two little legs break. Pay attention, of course, to the positive and the negative terminal. So when you're actually applying your new uh, capacitor down here, you're going to notice that on um, on the modern capacitors, some of them actually have a longer positive leg, and the shorter leg will be the negative. Now, if it doesn't have that on the capacitor, it should have a sort of a white strip with maybe um, black arrows or even like um, dotted lines of sort. And that will indicate your negative side. Remember just to tin them up nicely, shorten them to the right size and of course bend the legs over and it should fit fairly nicely in there. Remember to uh, also place it back in the case and do like um, test fits. If you just put all of these onto the board, and then put the case on, chances are it won't fit if it's not the original sizes. So do pay note to that. Now, if you have the dual ASIC or twin ASIC motherboard, that's absolutely fine. All you're going to need is to uh, note this side here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. There we go. So you're just going to need this parts list. And again, work from C1 all the way down to C49. C1 here actually has C3 next to it. So you can see the difference straight away. Um, I would uh, certainly start with this one, take it up, break it, replace it, and then move on to C3, and then C6, etc., etc., etc. Remember to sort of fit, uh, test fit um, with your case. And as you move on, you should be able to progress nicely. Of course, if you have any issues, I would always suggest desolder it. Maybe use another one if you've cut the legs too short or perhaps um, trim the legs down a little bit maybe fold them over a bit more just see how your case fits in accordance to the capacitor that you managed to get but going back to this one again if you can't get 33 6.3 volts like me get the, th the 33 10 volts do not go um, to like 16 volts if there's a 10 volts available all you're doing is just buying a larger capacitor and you're going to have a problem with the fitting so just take uh, just take note with that the capacitors required for both single and dual ASIC Game Gear motherboards are the same. On the top here, you can see the power board, C5, 11, 13, coincide with the diagram on the right here, C5, 11, 13, and of course, C1 through to uh, C7 on the left side here. So we have the PCB power board here and the audio board on this side. Just remember and take note that on the power board, the C13 one, this is the largest of capacitors actually inside the Game Gear and funnily enough, the hardest one to find um, the duplicate of. So I was unable to find the 6.3 volts 
and uh, unfortunately had to uh, go with a 16 volt so an 820 uf 16 volt capacitor as shown earlier in the video uh, where you see the very large tall blue capacitor in comparison to the short of game gear uh, black capacitor that's why i'm trying to check mine because i have so many of them and luckily i found two or three which are okay but i will still endeavor to find the originals of all capacitors um, and replace them at a later date. But they will work fine probably for the next 20 years, but I'd rather have um, something a little smaller due to both uh, ease of fitting. And of course, if they get a bit hotter, they're going to, um, they're just gonna generate more heat. You know, it's more material there. So uh, I'm just trying to be cautious, but if you're just trying to get your game gear to work, chances are this will work just fine for the next sort of 10, 15, 20 years. There's no reason that it shouldn't. Now we've looked at the capacitor list and the diagram, we're now going to look at starting at removing capacitors and starting with this one here. This is C1, uh, the 33.6.3 uh, volts in the bottom middle left of the, um, of the main motherboard. We'll just go ahead and zoom into that. Just get a nice little uh, zoom in. Hopefully that can focus. There we go. Lovely. So yeah, we're going to start with uh, removing this one. So what you want to do first is go ahead and grab your long nose pliers, these things, and you're just going to want to get it firmly at the edges and bring it up, okay? You can just see some of the glue underneath there. And we're just going to rock it forwards and backwards until the legs hang off. I'm not trying to grip this too hard either. There we go. That snapped off very nicely. Hope you can see that. Great, I'm just basically gonna put this to one side. We'll never use that again. It really doesn't matter. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually to clean that area up in preparation for um, adding some solder to both points. Then we'll try and remove that solder with some copper braid. That will uh, actually suck all the uh, solder up Try and get this nice and clean. Okay. That's nice. That glue's not actually coming up. It's quite hard and crusty. We could scrape away at it, but to be honest, as long as there's no metal shorting and there's no dirt, I'm quite happy to leave that there. Right, so the next thing we want to do is to uh, add some solder these two points so we're going to want to add it to the positive and negative so I don't know where you can see that on the camera but there's actually a little positive symbol right there so I've just added solder to actually help with the removal of these two legs. Now you can just solder straight to it, but instead of doing that, we're gonna just try and use some braiding and consume the solder that's on the board. inspect that. So what I'm going to do is just clean these two up again and then we're going to apply some solder to this capacitor. Let's put it there, it's actually in focus. There we go, to our uh, C1 capacitor after uh, we shorten the legs. We'll solder it down and we'll bend it over and that is essentially... Before we cut and solder the legs we need to actually measure out how long we want our legs to be. And there's like a little box here. Hopefully you can see that, this, this white box. It shouldn't, the capacitor shouldn't go any further than that. So we really want to keep the legs as short as possible, soldered up, and then we want to bend them um, in sort of an arc so it lays nicely across. So we're just going to try and do that now. Let's get on the leg across. 
across this way to see sort of where you want it and then how much leg you're going to need, about that much. Okay. So I've just cut and removed the legs. Remember that is the positive. That's negative side of the capacitor, that's the positive. So it's actually going to go this side. I would suggest that you widen the capacitor legs. You can actually just use your finger because the legs bend nicely. So you just want to get it to bend out at the bottom and then you're going to get it to bend in again. So you're going to get it to bend a little bit out like that. Then you're going to sort of, then you're going to get your, uh, your pliers and just bend them in. Hopefully you can see that now. So actually bent. Go against that should be nice. Nice and easy to see. It's very bent now. So let's just measure that up. And that actually needs to be splayed out just a tiny bit more. Let's have a look. Yeah, that will do just nicely. Okay, so next what you need to do is to solder up the capacitor. Now I like to uh, use a little soldering alligator clip with my solder station. So go ahead, get your uh, solder and your soldering iron and you're going to want to just begin to warm up each of the legs and just apply a little bit of solder that up. This will help when it comes to the actual marrying of each leg. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, now we've uh, removed the old solder and the legs have gone. Just going to apply some nice new fresh solder. tinned up the legs, which is going to take the long nose pliers and apply the capacitor incorrectly. Remember the negative side is negative, the positive symbol is on the board. So I actually want to go, because we're bending it this way, we want to go this way here. So here we go. Just take your time with this, remember. Very clean. Okay, now that is on the board. Success. You can go ahead and turn your soldering station off for the time being. And we're just going to go ahead and inspect this. Okay. So the capacitor is now properly soldered onto the board. The legs, we have enough length to actually begin to slowly, very slowly, lift up so I've got my thumb under the bottom of it where the wire is and I'm just gently turning it over. What I'm going to do is just turn this slightly this way so you can get a better view. There we go. Now the capacitor's on we're going to begin to bend it all the way up and over and just slowly and gently just gently fold it over onto itself and try our best to keep it within the little white box. I don't know whether you can still see that. Let's try and get that in view. See the white, the white line there? Okay, so that seems to be pretty much in it. It's, it's only fractionally just over. Now this little capacitor's in, the C1. We're just going to continue this process throughout the rest of the board, um, starting from C1 all the way through to the, uh, the final motherboard capacitor. I may or may not leave these um, leave these two alone and do a test first. The reason for that is these two, the replacements, are really quite large. I'll just show you. So the next capacitor we're going to be replacing is the C4 capacitor right here. 
It's a 10 UF 16 volt capacitor. Unfortunately, it's another one of those which is difficult to get. So we're gonna replace it with this little guy right here, which is a 10 UF 25 volt capacitor. Remember to take note again, and I always have to go over little things like this because these things get forgotten. The negative can be seen with this strip here and it's usually a shorter leg. Positive is the longer leg. So what we're gonna do is just uh, remove this capacitor, uh, remove the solder on this here on the pads, uh, replace that with nice fresh solder. We're gonna chop these legs down after sizing it up on the board, solder them, and then um, bend it over and uh, fit it nicely. And again, we'll just keep moving on to these. And as we go, uh, instead of just going through this each time, we can just get through it and you can see the end result really as to how it looks. All right, let's uh, zoom in and get that, uh, get that little capacitor off and replaced. We're now at the point where uh, I'm on the last capacitor right here. I'm just gonna push it over, fold it in nicely. And there we go, it's on the motherboard. It's actually, that's fitted in really rather well. In fact, thankfully, because I did one of these before as a test to make sure I half or semi knew what I was doing, um, it means that I've now actually ended up soldering these things onto the board so much better. Now what we want to do is try and test it. Can we boot this thing up? we will now find out. So we need a game in the back, otherwise we may just get a backlight. So we're just gonna pop the game in here. Okay, right. We also need the power PCB and we need the battery bay. So first things first, we need to, which way is this? It's gonna go here. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this in. I haven't done any modifications to this yet and we don't want to, and we now need to put the batteries in, so step by step. Let's move this out a bit. And what I'm doing is I'm actually holding the board in upside down, otherwise when I'm pushing the batteries in, these springs may actually push the board back out and there won't be any contact. Three more batteries to go. So all the batteries are in, the switch is to the off position, and now we just need to pop this little guy in. Let's just have a look. So it would be, how would it be? Let's have a look. So it would actually be this one here. So again, when you're doing this sort of thing, just double check everything. Now I could have done something wrong and it could all go wrong now, but let's just cross our fingers and hope that it doesn't. Okay, here we go. Will we get a picture? Uh, yes? Holy moly, I think we've done it. I wonder if you can see that. Let's try and zoom in here. Look at that. I'm trying to get the best possible picture. Let me go ahead and turn off my uh, supporting light. There we are. And maybe we can get a really good image there. Anyway, that's, that's about as good as the image is going to get, I think. Maybe I'll turn off my main light as well for one moment. Okay. How is that? Is that slightly better? So yeah, something was wrong with one of the capacitors on the main board. And now we are back in action. So that's working there. What I'm also gonna do is just look for one of the buttons. All you need is one of these. This is one of the push buttons. I'm just gonna put it on one of the pads. Let me zoom back out again. There we go. Right, so let's just pop that on. Here, this would be equivalent of start. Actually, let's not go to start. Let's go to this one here. There we go, that's psych. Now we'll push the start. Let's see what happens. There we go, Sega. Oh, that would be so good if you could see that. Anyway, so now I've got Sonic waving. Um, oh, there we go, fantastic. You can actually see him now. 
that's the best image. So fantastic, we've uh, essentially fixed this Game Gear. However, instead of just stopping there, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off and we're going to proceed to replacing the two capacitors on the main board. Let's just try, if we can lift this out nicely, that'll be good. Okay, so what I need to do is actually just get this cable out. There we go, lovely. So I take this. This motherboard is now done, it's clean. The only thing we need to come back to and address is the uh, screen, just giving that a good cleaning up later. So let's put that on some kitchen towel, just to one side. Now we need to take this out. So we need to flip it. Just don't let that little button disappear. There's another one. Okay, let's get rid of all of these batteries. Put those to one side. I'm having to use this finger because I actually burnt this one earlier on the soldering iron. It's one of those things, it doesn't matter how often you use soldering iron, sometimes you may find yourself catching yourself. So I'm going to leave these batteries in there, that's kind of irrelevant at this time. And we still need to clean up the case because while you're at it, why not? Now the two we want to attack is this one here and this one here. Looking at the PCB, we have uh, C5, which is this one here, and this one here is C11. I've marked them both up with some pen. We're going to keep our C13 because we, one, know it works, two, I will try and replace this at a later date, and three, I really do not want to struggle fitting a capacitor that is that big, so we basically can't close the case. I've seen some people, they remove this one, they bend it, the new one, they bend it right over, so I'll just get this, and this comes across here, laying here, and then this one basically lays across there. But I don't want to try doing that at the minute because I should be able to find another one of these right, online. So now I'm going to desolder this one, this one, and the inducer. So we're going to flip that over. First one we'll start with will be this one right here, which is C5. Okay. Now the PCB has uh, had the inducer removed, um, some fresh solder put on, put back in there, and it's, uh, it's actually seating slightly lower, and it's much more uh, secure. There's absolutely, you know, it's almost no movement in that. Actually, that's the board just wiggling on that. If I hold the board still, yeah, barely nothing. And these two are very nicely fitted in there. They actually took me a while, but thanks to the magic of editing, I managed to speed that up. Next we're going to look at the audio board and that means that we're going to need to replace C7, C1, C2, C3 and C5. Um, remember just to check back with the schematic on that. I'm not going to go over the schematic again because you already have it and uh, for the sake of speed and moving through this project I'm going to continue on. Moving into the audio board here, these um, capacitors are surface mounted and you can't get to the bottom of it. See it's clear there? So the only way to remove these is actually to take your uh, your long nose pliers and to sort of here we go and sort of just sort of wiggle it backwards and forwards just like the other one. And as soon as it pops off, I can show you the base. Bear with me. There we go. So hopefully you can see this. So I've got to remove these legs here, and there's two pads. This top one here is negative, uh, so it's positive, and this bottom one is negative. I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of these, and then I'll use the schematic, just as you should, um, to replace them all to go through them all. So just looking at this, this one here appears to be C5, which is 100 UF 6.3. This one here is. C3, this one is C2, C1, and C7. And again, that goes through the uh, audio board. C1, 100, C2, 100, C3, 100, C5, 47 UF, and C7, 47. So uh, these two are the 47, and the other three are the 100 UF. And I'm going to go ahead and replace these now. So these coincide here. these coincide here. Let's continue on now. 
Okay, so we finally reached the point where all capacitors, bar the uh, the main large power capacitor, which shall be replaced in the future, have been uh, changed now. Now you can see not all of these are lying nice and flush, like say this one here, but that really doesn't matter for now. As long as it fits in, that's fine. If it doesn't, we can always test and adjust, um, add a little bit more solder, release it a little bit, push it down a little bit. Um, as you can see here, actually, that one now, there we go, that, that's very nice. So as long as there's no shorting, we should be very, very good. So the next step now is to actually move on to cleaning the cases and uh, refitting everything together. So clean the cases, sorry, and cleaning the screen, fitting it back together, plug it back together and give it a test. So grabbing your isopropyl alcohol, we're just gonna give it a quick spray down. So we're just gonna start with the outside and then move nicely on to the inside. for this one. try refitting the whole thing back together. I'll try and keep these cables down the side here. this cable is moved up around here for now. We're going to need to put the buttons back in. So, of course, they all seem good. We get our little pads. These things go back in here. And we just finally need this pad here, the omnidirectional, which is this one. But it looks a little bit dirty to me, so I'm just going to give it a quick clean over. You can probably see there, it's quite dirty. So we put there, put that there. A very nice clean uh, cotton bud. Give it a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and give it a good scrub. You get a really good feeling from sort of these final few touches. Great. So finally, we can put this in. Now you should be able to see here, there's actually two locating pins for these holes and they'll just sit right in there so it can only go in one way there we go just try and put the screen in nicely okay. there we go very nice very well sat in everything seems just fine okay very very pleased with this so far 
Next, you want to get uh, all of your little screws and then just put them back into the board. We'll show you through that now. Great. And now that's done, the next thing to do is actually to marry the two things up. See if I can do it this way. So first things first, let's try and get the speaker in. Very nice. Finally, we're going to put the power in. Alright, great. Now, very carefully close it up. Okay. This, this is really the time to be uber careful. So I'm giving it a little bit of a wiggle. And I'm just going to look and check as to where these cables are. You might be able to close it if the cables are in the way, which this one is. Let me move that in. Okay, so it's okay on this side. So it's okay on this side, just this side. We have all the uh, replaced capacitors. Hopefully this should, uh, this should seat very nicely. So I know what you're thinking. I haven't put the button in yet. I have, I've done that on purpose, so I'm trying to get... A nice seating. I think that's actually going to be okay when I put the screws in. So now we need the button. There we go. So now that that sits well, see this capacitor here has actually moved over just a tiny bit. Now that, that sits well, I can uh, remove this just a little bit, just enough to get the button in. thing you want to do last thing you want to do is actually um, put the button in put this all together then it doesn't seat well and then you have like the button falling around so it seems kind of backwards and forwards but it is a good uh, I find it to be quite a useful method to the madness so to speak again everyone has their uh, different method for me, mine works just fine. And I can just lift it up gently. And uh, it can be a pain to actually remember which way around this goes. Okay, so come on. Mistakes. It looks very, very similar which way it goes on. Just spin it 180, pop it back on, and you should be okay. Just give it a test. Yep. Perfect. Now we can uh, proceed. What I found is this capacitor right here, I had to desolder and resolder back on because it's uh, it's actually fouling with this pin here, which uh, uh, which is where you actually put the main outer screw in. So I'm now going to try and bend it over and over to this corner here, hoping that it no longer fouls and it doesn't touch anymore. So let's, let's cross fingers. That is significantly further over. Oh, now let's try and close the case. All right, I'm going to do something unusual. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to add two wires. I'm going to route it, or route it in English, around here and into this section right here. Good choice. Okay, 
So um, what I've done is I've moved this whole capacitor by putting the red and the black cable on. I've moved it all the way over here and they're both soldered up. What I've got and what I'm going to use um, is some nail varnish, but this is the transparent stuff. So I think it's the thing you put on top of uh, your color or whatever if you're a young lady and you do this. And I'm doing that so I can just create a little layer between the, um, the metal and the other components. And hopefully this will create that barrier. Now I do have a rubberized version of this, which you're supposed to use, but just in case for you lovely people out there, um, you don't have, I would suggest, well, I, I would assume most of you don't have access to those sort of things. This sort of thing you can get for like a dollar from the dollar store or something, and you can be sort of inventive and creative, and it creates a, a really good fix. Now what I'm gonna do is leave that for uh, say five minutes, come back, apply another layer, and then we'll move on again. Alright, so uh, we've now applied a second layer of the nail um, varnish, whatever you want to call it, uh, to the wires. We're trying not to get any on the board itself, because um, I heard that it can be corrosive to some of the boards. Um, so now we just want to try and get this down in between this capacitor. Again, I'm just going to go for that thing first. There we go, and then we'll get positive on top. If I can push it underneath the bulbs area here, if there's a bit of space, then it should sit nicely right here. There we go. That's good. Let's get the red down. The great thing about this is you can literally just push it straight down like that, and then the wires will follow because there's nothing sort of exposed. And this should be able to sit right here. Let's zoom in. There we go. Let's turn the game gear. So now it's in. This capacitor, which was located here, has now been routed over here, and it's sitting nicely right there. Okay, hopefully this will work just fine. Let's uh, try and close up the lid, and uh, cross the fingers that everything closes up great. If not, <laughs> may the problems continue. <laughs> okay, that seems to be all right. We're not having the same resistance that I had before. So the next thing to do really is to uh, go ahead and put the screws in. Just need to get a tiny bit of a pop head in there. We'll tighten it down uh, shortly. Seems like I'm over tightening some of them. That's because they just didn't uh, go. They, they didn't screw in as far with the other screwdriver. So I'm uh, just getting them to that point where they're touching at the base. Right. We'll get the game bit, and we'll get this one in here. Because this was our problem corner. It's not too bad now. I think perhaps another thing on the list for the future to get nice new fresh uh, screws because all of these ones I think they're just a bit old a bit used let's just try and make sure that's all good okay now we're going to try and tighten these all down just a little bit more yeah this doesn't seem to be too bad at all This one was just a tiny bit more. I've really taken my time with this because I've put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this video. And I would like the best possible outcome that we can get. All right, next, we just need to throw some batteries in it, put the game in, cross our fingers, and hopefully, I would have done a good job. So 
of team athletic there. Go. Uh, it covers. Match recovers. Game. Where's the game? There we go. In. Turn. Pray. Little prayer. Oh, looks good. I've got screen. Buttons working up. Down. Okay. Start button. No sound. Oh no. What? Let's just see if I can play it first. It's good, it's good. No, nothing. Right, no problem. No problem. Perhaps that's a uh, resolder job I did. Uh, it just came away. You've got to remember the soldering work on this is very, very tight tolerance. So you've just got to take your time. Don't get frustrated with it. And it's all learning. Everything about this is learning. And we are so close to the end. There's absolutely no point in getting frustrated. No point in getting worried. It will come together in the end. So let's get it all taken apart now. don't think it has anything to do with the um, with the capacitor we just remotely removed. I think it's got something to do with the uh, the soundboard. So perhaps where it was put back together, one of the legs was uh, squished or shorted, and we should be able to check that fairly quickly. So the issue I seem to be having is on this side here. Okay, so after taking this thing all apart again, I resoldered the little capacitor, that was a pain. Um, didn't seem to be a problem with it, but I did that anyway. Uh, but mainly, what I did is I completely changed this wire because it looked like it was uh, compressed between. Let's see if we can get in here. Okay, so this wire here actually looked like it was um, maybe forked into here so they may have been touching or shorting out so I completely replaced this wire and I've actually routed it or routed it very very nicely and as you can see it looks like a much more professional job uh, it's going straight across here and it's a tiny dab and I've um, you know I'm now ready to sort of put it all back together and check it but there we go powers on lights on everything seems fine there we've got the capacitor over here let's zoom out Okay, everything seems to be okay. Now cross your fingers. Let's press start. Okay, here comes Sonic. Please. Yes. Now let's pray that we put it all back together. And it continues to work. Here we go. I'll get back to you once we're back together again. And uh, we'll just do the switch on. Please let it work this time. Okay, so... We're at the point now where the case is just going back together and we've got to put the screws back in. Now straight away I can tell you that it's going back together much easier, much, much easier. There's not as much compression or difficulty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop all these screws back in and uh, that was the end of screw. And hope that we have finally our success. Have we earned? Have we finally earned the, uh, the end result that we were looking for? Because this has been one heck of a job. However, it's going to be very, very good fun doing all of this. Let's take my finger off. Let's do the gambit last. Let's just do. Let's just put 
the old screwdriver. Start to screw this bad boy together. Okay, so I'm just sort of screwing this down, but I'm not screwing it in tight. Because we, uh, we don't want to cause any shorting or anything. And I'm really hoping that this time uh, I'm unlucky, and I guess I shouldn't say I'm lucky because this is just science at the end of the day, you know. Um, but I guess at that point we were like, ah, we've seen it working, we've got the sound, we've had the sound <laughs> several times. Now it all comes down to when it's all back together, battery's in, and the power switch is fine. What will we? Alright, let's get these batteries in and pray. Battery bay, I'll forget that, we'll do that in a sec. Here we go. In the game. Moment of truth. Please. We have power. We have picture. Buttons work up, down, all the way down to Sonic. Cross your fingers. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god, what a mission. Let's see if you can see that. What a mission. And we'll just turn the, the volume down. And then up. And down. There we go. That's when you know it's uh, it's working. See, fantastic. What I'm gonna do is just start the game. Let's see if we can play this upside down. Just so you can see if uh, all the buttons are working. Oh my gosh! Which way is gonna be facing? Okay. Look at that, it's Sonic. <laughs> Oh, we've got to go this way, okay. Oh my goodness. I'm literally playing this backwards and upside down. Oh my goodness. Was there, was there an enemy there? Oh my god! This is insane. Oh, how's the other button? Both of them do jump, which is normal. And we got pause. Everything works. Great. Anyway, there we go. A fully refurbished, fully working kid gear. Kid gear. What a mission that was. So hopefully this was really helpful to um, somebody else out there, because there, are, uh, as you saw as we went through the video, there's quite a few um, problems that you may come across. I haven't seen anybody else, um, it's great, I can't, I, I, I haven't seen anybody else on YouTube who doesn't offer anything more than just replacement of the capacitors. We've done the inducer, um, which is the, the uh, coil next to the largest capacitor on the board. We've even remoted a capacitor so it would fit and close easier because these modern capacitors are larger and the older ones are just nigh on impossible. I mean, I'll just pick some of these up because I've still got some of these. I mean, they're absolutely tiny in comparison to these equivalent, you know, it's it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it works. Everything's great. Uh, please feel free to uh, give me a big, a big thumbs up. Uh, share it if uh, if you're, you're feeling generous. And of course, um, subscribe. I'd love it if you would subscribe. I've got loads more great videos like this coming up. There we go, we've got the super speed now. 
<laughs> I just can't believe it's all playing, working, and that sound is solid now. Anyway, from ESJ and AKA Chris Armstrong, thank you so much for joining me. And here's your finished kid gear. Fantastic. Bye for now.